Hi guys, William Morris here, and today I just wanted to take a look at my trailer template uh, for Cubase. So a template basically allows me to write a lot quicker because I can already have a lot of the tracks um, and routing and effects already in place. So I can kind of just focus on the writing rather than adding in tracks, adding in effects and stuff like that. So every new template I open for every new uh, track and project will look like this. Uh, so in the kind of top fold away area, have a time code marker if I need to hit any particular points, although most stuff I write isn't picture. I have a, a marker track in below here, which I generally use just to mark out the rough kind of structure of the track. So if I want a build section or a big section or a, an intro or something like that, I can just mark it down and skip between them easily. I usually include a video track because sometimes I like to work to uh, just video for a bit of inspiration or just to get an idea of timing or structure. And in below that, I have a tempo track here, which I use to obviously put in uh, sort of speed ramps and different sort of tempo changes. Sometimes I'll also include a time signature track as well. So that's pretty much it for the top section. I like to keep everything up here whilst the track's running, just so I can see what's going on at all times. And now down here below, I have my instrument groups. So I have percussion effects, which generally covers the sort of more sound designy. Uh, percussion like whooshes, stings, that kind of thing. I uh, have one for pianos, one for basses, all my synths going here, guitar section, orchestral strings, brass, choir. Uh, I also do include woodwind sometimes for trailer tracks but it's obviously not as uh, not as common. And then finally in below there's uh, a folder for effects channels uh, which I shall come back to in a minute. So the folders just help keep everything really nice and tidy. Uh, you can color code them as well. Obviously your color coding might be different to mine. And the order I have tends to be the uh, percussion and effect stuff first, and then lower end things like my bass. Then we go on to synth and guitars, and then generally the orchestra kind of sits at the, at the bottom. So if I open up the first folder, percussion, this one is arranged on a sort of per library basis. So I have uh, Spitfire's hands and percussion at the top here. Uh, the Albion percussion stuff, there's some 8DO percussion in here, Decimator Drums, Symphonia, Damage, Heavy Ocity Master Sessions, and Juggernaut down at the bottom here. So basically everything has its own subfolder, and then underneath that the instrument tracks are all in there. Now I did used to use MIDI tracks routed to a, a, a version of Contact, um, but I actually really prefer the workflow of using instrument tracks over MIDI tracks. In Cubase, it just allows me to mix as if it was audio. Um, so I tend to work in MIDI, mostly up until the end of the project when I'm starting to bounce things down to audio. It's obviously a lot of tracks, so um, you do end up having <laughs> maybe even a couple of hundred instances of contact uh, ready to be opened. So I believe this is obviously going to take a bit of a hit on CPU and memory, but for me it's just the, the sort of best uh, workflow. But to kind of help with all of that, everything when the project is loaded in is uh, disabled uh, by default. So I can kind of go through and enable what I need. So you just click on and then go to enable track and it'll load in the appropriate uh, sample I have in there. So here's the low hits already set up and it's all ready to go for whenever I need it. If there's anything you know you can change your mind about you just go down to disable track again and that's it gone purged from memory and any sort of CPU use as well. The new way I've been working is that all these different percussion tracks get rooted to either a low percussion or high percussion group. This just makes it easier for me with stems at the end of a project I can just bounce straight out then um, for high and low percussion which is normally what the the trailer libraries are looking for is a, is a split like that. So that's the percussion folder. Um, if we take a look at effects, you basically notice that they're all uh, they're all blank for this. There's nothing actually preloaded because I tend to do different uh, sound design, different effects, different things for every single uh, project or track. So these are really just here, just as a kind of um, quick start, so I don't have to add in the tracks. And obviously with uh, sound design stuff, I could be using uh, something from Contact or another synth or sampler. So I have these as instrument tracks and then I have preloaded 10 audio tracks, which I usually have to add more to as the project goes. But this is just a starting point. 
So that's the effects. Uh, now I have pianos. So these are kind of just a few of my favorite pianos that I have uh, disabled but ready to go if needed. A lot of the pianos actually take up um, quite a large amount of RAM, so they take a little longer to load, so it's nice to leave them disabled. You could actually go one step further when uh, clicking and enabling the tracks by having it preset so that all the uh, samples were purged from the contact instance itself. Because I think uh, in this instance, the 8DO Steinway Grand is maybe around two gigabytes fully loaded for the for the high memory versions. So obviously purged, if you're not gonna use all that, and especially in trailer music, if you're just maybe using a single hit on the piano or some kind of uh, thick chords in the background or something like that, you're probably not gonna be using, you know, all those samples in the two gig limit. So that's the pianos. Uh, let's move on to bass. And I just have uh, a space for electric bass, which is um, ready for input from a Kemper and then I have a, a sub bass there's a soft synth called abuser that I really like and obviously something from 8DO and I think I believe this is just a bass guitar from uh, native instruments in there as well okay so on to the synths and this is again split sort of like stems uh, but as I use different tend to use different synths on every project uh, so these are just instances of contact with nothing loaded so I can choose whatever I want when I dive in. But I've generally done synths, uh, synths long and low, synths long and high, uh, synths short and low, and then synths short and high. And each of these has their own group as well. So for guitars, um, I use the Kemper a lot. So I've got three uh, stereo channels ready to go, which are hooked up to the Kemper, and then a couple of instrument channels for some big chunky guitar power chords from uh, the Atlantica and this is the orchestral tools uh, power chord guitar. So the orchestral section is probably the biggest in the template. Um, I have the strings in here and again they are divided into low longs, high longs, low shorts and high shorts. So a bit different to the percussion and some of the other things in that these are actually uh, not divided by library, but divided by their sort of purpose in the track. And I've kind of given shortcuts for for all of the library names. Uh, so AO is Albion 1, OT is Orchestral Tools, Metropolis, Arc. And then we have uh, Iceni, also from Albion, some Tundra, uh, Symphobia, and Lass. These are all loaded up, ready to go. Um, obviously, maybe I don't use them all in one project, but a lot of... Um, my trailer stuff end up stacking libraries and layering them together. So it's nice to have it all kind of ready to, to go if needed. And basically you get the same kind of thing for the for the high longs and the low shorts as well. So that's strings. Uh, let's take a look at brass, which is really similar. I'm using kind of similar libraries um, for the same thing, just to give it sort of some consistency across the track. So there's more Albion 1, more Iceni. And then we have breakouts from uh, Metropolis Arc uh, brass sections. These are just kind of the basic articulations that allow me to just start writing pretty much straight away. Obviously, there's there's a lot more patches in these libraries, so uh, a full template would be a lot bigger, but I don't like to kind of have too much visible at any one time. So a lot of these for brass and strings will be uh, legatos or sustained patches. Uh, but later on I might use like uh, Mercatos or some of the Crescendos or things like that as well. So yep, this is um, Brass Long High, Brass Short Low, and Brass Short High as well. And then finally, last section at the bottom is Choirs. I don't use a huge amount of Choirs uh, in some of my stuff, so this section's maybe a little bit underdeveloped, but um, it's basically just Choirs Long and then Choir Short for staccato and short macato kind of articulations and for this I'm mainly using uh, the Metropolis Art Choir just the men's and women's choir and then supplemented with uh, 8DO Requiem uh, a bit of vocalise at the big uh, the bottom here and also some uh, Libris which is the children's choir from 8DO so that's the choirs so I just want to show you the routing now so where everything goes uh, once it's been on the instrument tracks so here's the mixer so I've set up um, a sort of uh, filter system here through the uh, channel type 
visibilities. Uh, basically, so I have a tracks one which shows all tracks. At the minute, it shows nothing because all the tracks are disabled by default. But as you enable a track, it will appear in the track section here. And this is basically every individual instrument and audio track in the project. Uh, the next one is groups, which just shows where the instrument tracks are routed to. So this was basically what we had in the project before with low, high percussion, uh, long and high synths and stuff like that, all the way through to the, the choirs again. So with everything being pre-routed, it just saves a ton of time, um, just so you're not clicking and going through everything every time you set up a track or a new, new project. I generally keep these buses free of effects to start with, so there's no inserts on them. Um, but I do, on the tracks one, uh, once you load things in, I have them pre-routed. Uh, actually, I'll just show you on the strings one here. So this is the uh, Albion One strings low sustain. So you can see it there. And if I open the uh, instrument panel for this, you can see that I have set up with a, an eighth note delay, which is down in the effects section, and also a, a string reverb that it's going to automatically. So these are all routed to these, the effects channel section here, and I'm using um, quantum leap spaces, basically with a different preset uh, for each section of the orchestra. So it's all the same orchestral hall, uh, but each preset is basically an impulse response taken from a different uh, section or part of the stage, which I think just helps to give you a bit more depth in the mix um, because it's not routing everything then to the, the same sort of reverb. There will be a lot of tracks as well that get individual reverbs and delays um, for sort of special things that they need to do, but these kind of just help give a, a general something to root to and start to glue some of the... Um, the, the sizes together for different libraries. So each of these reverbs as well has um, kind of a bit of an EQ curve on it just to try and get rid of some of the mud in the low end and some of that kind of top end as well. So I have preset up for percussion, strings, brass, uh, winds, choir, and I've started doing one for synths as well, which is kind of a mid hall sort of setting, um, but some of the synths end up getting their own special presets. Uh, then have a, an eighth note delay, which is ready to go, just a simple one that I can put on things quickly. And then I have this uh, long tail reverb from R2, uh, which I've set to a sort of almost eight second uh, tail time. So it's really nice for like long whooshes and just anything that you want to kind of really ring out and sustain over a part. So yeah, that's the effects channels. I'm just gonna go back to the mixer now. And as you can see, this is the track that we enabled, uh, the Albion One strings. And if you look in the send section, you can still see the routing there that it's all ready to go. Also have a third uh, category, which is just ready with all the subgroups. And then you can scroll along and see all the effects presets as well. As standard, I also have a couple of things on the master bus. I have a limiter, just the standard Cubase one to start with because it's quite low on CPU. Um, and this is just set to really light peak limiting uh, just to kind of get things going. And then I have uh, something from the slate bundle, which is just a, a mix bus emulation. And then also a tape emulation, which isn't always on, it just depends on the track. And these are just a couple of things on the mix bus just to, to, get, to get it started. Okay guys, so I hope you found this useful. I'm always interested to see other people's sort of templates and the way they work, um, anything to kind of speed up that workflow and get tracks going as quick as possible and just allowing you to focus on the music side of things. I've been using this template for a few months now uh, and it's it's really working well for me so far. Um, I quite like that there's not too much sort of preloaded up front. It still allows you to kind of, um, you know, dig into some other libraries and not kind of just go back to the same standards all the time. But there's also enough in it that you're not adding tracks all the time um, and doing loads of routing and stuff like that as well. So yeah, I hope you found this useful. Uh, if there's any questions that you want to ask, uh, just let me know in the comments.